Okay. Okay. Did you get a picture of it? No, oh, this is on camera. Okay. Okay, so this is the, um, they'll either call it the Ambu bag or the resuscitator bag. Okay? So here's, they're both Ambu bags or resuscitator bags. Um, you're going to identify the following. So one, the inflation bag, which is this part here. Um, the oxygen reservoir is here, here. Um, and the reason why a, you have a reservoir on any device is it increases the amount of oxygen. So again, you're not just getting what's coming from the flow meter, but you're also, it's able to pull from the reservoir. So this fills up with oxygen as well as what's coming through the tubing. Um, oxygen attachment port. So this is what's going to attach to the flow meter. Look at how it's designed. It can either be screwed on without a Christmas tree or a nipple adapter or you can just push it right onto the, the nipple adapter. So that's the nice thing about these new ones is they'll work with or without a Christmas tree. Um, the breathing valve assembly is this whole piece right here. Um, and mask or endotube. So now this could hook to the, um, this Ambu mask or if the patient is intubated, it hooks right to the endotracheal tube. So either you can use with the mask or without. It will hook on right there. Okay? And then the exhalation port on this one is here. Uh, <clears throat> so what you're going to do is, one, describe the type of patient an exhalation valve with each resuscitator bag. Well, first of all, what type of patient would you use this on, do you think? Do you uh, think you'd use it on everybody that comes into the hospital? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. No. So it has to be somebody that obviously is having some type of respiratory failure. They can't breathe on their own. So it would be somebody with, with respiratory failure that cannot breathe on their own. So you're not going to just come up and give, do, because if somebody's having no breathing problems, they're awake and alert, are you going to go, here, I'm just going to give you a couple of breaths? No, you're not going to do that to somebody. So this would be somebody that already has a, comp a compromised um, respiratory problem that they can't breathe on their own. Um, also on the resuscitator bag, they have different types of exhalation valves. Okay, so this one, if I unscrew it, you'll be able to see it has a diaphragm. So this one has a diaphragm exhalation valve. You see the orange piece? Then this one is called, when you squeeze it, it looks like a duck bill. And that's what it's called, a duck bill. Oh, that's like a glottis. Yeah. Duck bill. Duck bill. Oh. <laughs> So see how you squeeze it and it opens up. <coughs> this one's a diaphragm. Oh, so I see, yeah. See how you squeeze it and it pushes the diaphragm forward. But air can't go back into the Ambu bag. That's what the exhalation valve's about. See, when I squeeze, a oxygen goes from here into the patient, but it can't go back into, because once I'm done squeezing, the valve closes. The diaphragm, when I squeeze, Oxygen goes this way, but you can't. It can't come back into the Ambu bag. Why would that be important? What difference would it make? Why would I not want the patient's exhaled air to go back in here? You don't want to give them carbon dioxide. Right. So if carbon dioxide goes in here, it's going to decrease my FiO2. So because I want this to give 100% oxygen. So if my patient's breathing back into the bag, it's not going to give 100% oxygen. So again, both of these. These are just different types of. So these are called what they call bag valve mask, Ambu bag, resuscitator bag. They're all the same name for these things. Okay, um, so what you're going to do is you're going to indicate the approximate volume when squeezing the Ambu bag. So how you're going to do this is you're going to attach this spirometer. Now be careful with the spirometer because if you drop it, it breaks. So. I, what I would suggest, instead of holding it over the floor, hold it over the counter, okay? And this button clears it and resets it to zero. And you're going to squeeze with one hand, or maybe you could have a partner hold the, this side. You're going to squeeze with one hand, 
and you're going to squeeze and reset it. You're going to squeeze with two hands. And you're going to see what the difference is in volume. Because what this does is this is measuring the volume of oxygen that's coming out of here. So you're going to measure it. So each time you do it, you reset it here. So all the way around is one liter. But like to the 0.4, that means it's 0.4 liters or 400 mLs. 0.7 is 0.7 liters or 700 mLs. All the way around is a liter or 1,000 mLs. So you're going to use the right spirometer to measure one hand and then do two hands. Okay? And let's see. Let me see if I have extra filters. Um, then the other thing is indicate the maximum flow meter setting for resuscitator bags. Maximum flow, re flow meter setting would be considered flush. Flush means above 15 liters. So maximum flow meter setting would be flush which is above 15 liters. Now let's look at this resuscitator bag. Now compare the two. What do you notice? What's the difference between these two? The size? Okay. So why do you think there's two sizes? One's a pediatric and one's a adult. Exactly. So this one would be, you see how the mask is smaller? So this would be used on a child. This would be used on an adult. So with children, this, has, this is called a pop-off valve. So with children, once the pressure gets too high, it won't allow you to go above a certain pressure. Once you hit that pressure, air starts escaping around here. So you cannot damage the child's lungs. See, once I squeeze too hard, it starts to escape out around here, around your pop-off valve. See it escaping, so when I'm occluding it, so I can't go, here, take a big breath. Because then it starts to escape. Does this one have a pop-off valve? No. So the question is, which resuscitator bags have a high pressure pop-off valve? Pediatric resuscitator bags. And then the next thing I'm going to have you do is I'm going to actually give you um, a filter and you're going to put it on the resuscitator bag, okay? And I want you to take a breath in. And I want you to tell me, does taking a spontaneous breath in open the valve? So does the valve open? So that's the next question. But the only way you're going to know is you're going to actually use a filter. And you're going to put the filter on here, and you're going to take a breath in through the filter. And you're going to tell me, does the valve open? Because we know the valve opens when I squeeze it. But will the, what if the patient's trying to take a breath? Will the valve open and give them, let them take oxygen? or not. So you'll have to see if that works. Then you're going to pressure check the, check the bag to ensure there are no leaks. How you pressure check a bag is you take off the mask, so make sure the mask is off, and you occlude the outlet port and you squeeze it. You should not be able to squeeze it. If there was a leak somewhere in here, you could squeeze it because the air is, because the air is not escaping because I have occluded. So you see how I'm pressure checking it to make sure there's no leaks. If I was able to squeeze it like this, there's a leak. Let me try to give it a leak. I'm giving it a leak and seeing if you can see. I guess I can't really give it a leak. See if I can if I can squeeze it, there's a leak someplace. So that's how you're going to pressure check, check it. Then you're going to ambu your patient. So this is your patient. You're going to put the mask on. You're going to turn it on. I'm going to give you a flow meter. You're going to turn it on 15 liters or higher. And you're going to manually resuscitate your patient. Now, <clears throat> one, you want to make sure your patient's in sniffing position. So you don't want to hyperextend their neck. 
Then you're going to use the CE method. Remember the CE method for ambling a patient? So C is over the mask, the three fingers are under the jaw, okay? And you're gonna have this connected to a flow meter. And then how am I gonna know if I'm, if it's working? Oh, that's chest cool. Rises. Mm -hmm. Chest rises. Good, so I should see chest rise. Okay, what if I don't get chest rise? It's not, not working, and let's go home and have some <laughs> yeah. lunch. Recheck. Right, recheck the head position. So maybe I don't have this head position, so recheck the position. Make sure I have a good seal. So I should get bilateral chest rise. Okay, so that's what you're going to do at this patient. So you're going to measure your one squeeze, two squeezes, the volume. You're going to see if the valve opens up when you take a spontaneous breath, and you're going to um, manually resuscitate your mannequin. 